Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Geometry, Chapter 12, Section 1 in this book. Um, and we're going to be talking about exploring solids. Now, it was going to take me forever to draw everything I was supposed to draw. So instead, I've brought solids to show you. But if you have this book, you need to turn to page 719 and follow along with the pictures in the book so you understand what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, these are kind of fun because they're shapes. It's what you think about with classic geometry is I'm going to learn my shapes. Well, today we get to learn some shapes if you didn't know. So all of these solid shapes are called poly for many hedron, many sided solid shapes. Okay, so here is an example one. It's a cube that I use with teaching. You throw it. <laughs> you catch up whatever land side that you land on, you have to answer that question. Uh, it's a little review game, but we'll use it for geometry today. So the flat surface is called a face. People call the flat surface of a watch the face of a watch, too. The edge is this straight part right here. Those are edges. Uh, the vertex are the pointy parts, vertices if it's plural. Okay. If it's regular, all the faces are congruent, and this one is regular. Every face is the same size and shape. Um, if there are all the vertices are poked out, it is convex. If it is concave, they poke in. So pretend like this shape is solid. <clears throat> this from, excuse me, an old Discovery Toys they use with babies, and you get them to put their shapes in there. Uh, but who knows, it could be used for high school geometry. Okay, so let's pretend like it's solid, and this one is concave because those poke in. This one is also concave because those poke in. Do you see? Where these are convex, all the corners go out. Convex, 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 convex. All right? So, for it to be a polyhedron, they, all the edges have to be straight. All the faces are flat. Um, so, the qu next question in the book is, is it a polyhedron? Or, <clears throat> like Rhett and Link say, will it taco? Will it polyhedron? Okay? So, our first shape is a prism. And is it a polyhedron? Yes, because they're all flat. Everything is flat. Nothing is curved. Oh, nothing is round, so yes, that is a polyhedron. The next one, and I was so excited to find this, is this shape. And you know, with each of these, we're pretending like it doesn't dent in. Pretend like it's just flat here. Is it a polyhedron? No, because that is curved. Eh, it will not polyhedron. And then the last one is a pyramid thing that's six on the bottom. And uh, mine's not really a pyramid. You have to pretend. You, this, look, I'm showing it to you from the bottom. You, and you can imagine the pyramid on top. But imagine a pyramid is sitting on this base. Would it be a polyhedron? Yes. Straight lines, uh, pointy parts. It's got everything it needs. Okay? So, like, one of the things we will do is count the faces. So, for our cube, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't forget the top and bottom. You count the edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And you can count the vertices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at shapes, say, are they a polyhedron? Count their faces, count their edges, count their vertices. Doesn't that sound fun? Okay, so some types of solids is a prism, that's that one. A pyramid, I don't have one. I used to have one, because I would use it when I was teaching chemistry, and you talk about tetrahedrons, is what the life, the chemistry that life is based on with carbon. Remember how you learned how carbon is special because it bonds in that tetrahedral shape? All right, a cylinder, I brought one of those, but mine's a bucket. So that's it. Now, is it a polyhedron? No, but it is a solid shape? Yes, but mine's going out, but pretend like it's like an oatmeal can and it doesn't have a bow on it. A cone, you know that shape from my ice cream cone. Do you prefer your ice cream in a cone or a cup? I prefer it in a cup with the cone upside down on top. 
That way I'm not in a hurry to eat the ice cream with it dripping, but I get all that yummy cone goodness. So, just my preference. And then a sphere. And look what I brought from the sphere. Ah! The world. All right. So, uh, those are our shapes that are, you'll see them drawn on page 719. Turn the page to 720, and they tell us a regular polyhedron. All faces are the same. So, like, our, they have a cube and they have a regular convex, oh, they, they have a, a non-regular concave cube where they cut a little piece out of it, and then a regular convex pyramid. Okay, the next thing it says is the, con the octahedron convex is it regular. So if all the edges are the same and all the faces are the same shape, then yes, it's going to be regular. They have one kind of like this, but it is um, flat on the sides and it would be considered non-regular. And then they have stair steps, and those are con non-convex or concave, non-regular. Now, let's go back to our sphere. One of the things we're real concerned about with our shapes is cutting them. So, like, we could cut our globe in half, and it would be two hemispheres. And if we took a big knife and went between it and cut it and looked at it, the cross section would be a circle. The shape that would be caused by cutting out like a tiny little thin slice out of it would be just a flat circle. So we really like this idea of taking a shape and cutting it. So we're going to first talk about with our cube. Okay, if I have a cube and I cut it, if I do a cross section straight in the middle here and showed it to you, what shape would it be? It would be a square, wouldn't it? It would look just like this. Okay, now, what if I cut it at an angle where it hits all four sides? So I just sort of cut down one and it goes through like, a, like down that way. The shape that would be made is a quadrilateral. If I took my cross section, it would be a quadrilateral if I cut it at an angle like that. And if I cut off just the corner, it would make a triangle. Now, we, you're like, why do I care? In Algebra 2, we're going to do this with cones. They're called conics, and we are going to talk a lot, more than you will ever want to talk about, the shapes that are made when you cut a cone. They're called conics. It's your parabola, oval, ellipse, circles, all hyperbola, those things that you learned some of the, the math for in Algebra 1, you're going to learn the geometry too in Algebra 2. So that's why that's there. Okay, so Plato said there are five regular solids. The tetrahedron has got four faces, four vertexes, and six ed edges. The cube has got six, eight, twelve. The octahedron, eight, six, twelve. The dodecahedron, that's fun to say, 12, 20, 30, and the icosahedron, 20. I think that's how you say it. My son, Nathan, was saying that his teacher say, said we're saying you were wrong. So a lot of we math teachers, we, we just learned how our teacher said it, and I'm sure like when it's this Greek stuff, we're saying it wrong. But anyway, so there are certain regular ones. Take a look at the pictures in your book. If you don't have this book, look it up on the internet, the platonic solids. So there was this, so he was like ancient Greece. And then came along Euler in the 1700s, and he figured out that the number of faces plus the number of ver vertex, vertices, equaled the edges plus two. So here we have a problem. It's got 14 faces. We want to know how many vertices it has. It has 36 edges. We write down Euler's theorem, we substitute it in, we solve for V, and it's 24. Now, with this part of our math, for a lot of this, you have to think about it. Because sometimes you have to think, okay, how many edges are there? How many times? And sometimes it helps to draw it and check it off, because it's real easy to be counting the edges and end up being wrong, that there being more than what you thought. So do this homework, it's fun. You can see like that's really exciting, all pretty homework with shapes and stuff. If there's a dotted line, that means that it's one that you're seeing through to the other side to see. All right, so come back and we'll talk more about geometry chapter 12, last chapter of the book, Math is Great.